Hello, friends. Welcome. Episode 88. Uh, appreciate you being here. Super, super fortunate to have uh, Logan with Decode Your Reality on my channel. Appreciate you being here, brother. How are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic, man. Thanks yeah. so much. I pr love what you do, of course. I, I uh, love your mind, and uh, it's it's an honor to be here to join forces with you. So, Thanks, dude. Yeah, I love what your message as well. It's cool to meet up in San Diego and hear what you had to say, and uh, we definitely had a, a similar some some things are very crossed over and I appreciated that. And uh, yeah, I got to hear you and Robin have a chat because she that got posted in our Telegram group because she's in one of my training courses. And it's really cool to hear you guys chat as well. And I just actually had a session with her today. And um, so, yeah, I just wanted to have you on and get to know kind of how the hell you got so deep into decoding. And uh, I have a lot of Jehovah's Witness friends that are live really powerful lives after they got out of it and so so i was curious kind of like yeah how deep into religion you were as a kid or if that was the case and then what what's changed over the years just kind of a little bit of background if you don't mind sharing yeah of course i'm i mean i've been as transparent as i could i can be on my channel i mean everybody knows everything about me for the most part the majority of stuff but yeah i get i got raised in the jw organization my mother who uh, is still in the organization. I think she's 42 years going strong, man. She's that's her life. Yeah. And we have a, a mutual, we have the deepest love. Of course, I'm, I've never been baptized. Okay. Um, but I was in that religion from the very time I was born all the way till I was 16. And then I decided that it wasn't for me. And I kind of broke my mother's heart, right? I really, I told her, you know, how I'm done. And I, I left and walked away, but it was, it was something that I don't regret. I, I, as a decoder, as somebody who analyzes life, I realized for me, my truth, what I found through the research is that we live in a predestined scripted reality. So your life is a screenplay that you're living through and everything that's happening for you, not to you, was supposed to happen. So for me, the religion was part of the destiny and journey that I'm living out right now. And it's been an amazing ride and I don't regret any of it. So, yeah. Yeah. Do you pull anything from those years that you think helped you? you know, to be more clear on what's going on. And yeah, right on. Totally. Totally. Okay. Yeah, totally. So it's been a, it's been a great journey, man. And I've, I've done a little bit of decoding of the JW faith. I know a lot of people, a lot of people have been asking me, can you decode that religion? And I'm, I'm playing with it. I'm, I'm going to eventually release a full decode on the JW organization uh, to show people what that's all about. And, and, you know, it really, the simplicity of it is, it fits in the same box as all the other 10,000 plus religions. There's no yeah. separation between, oh, this is the one, this one's better than that one. Well, when you really do the research, you'll realize that it's all influence, it's all marketing, and they all are part of the same origin. It's just, it's like, you know, why did, like I say, uh, God is a rich woman's closet or a walk-in rich woman's closet. It, it owns everything. 50,000 pairs of jeans, 20,000 pairs of shoes, all the jewelry, the bracelets. That's religion. That's, that's sports. That's, that's the, that's our life. That's our world. So it's just, it, when you look at it that way, you, you, cause you and I shared that same kind of concepts where you realize that life takes on a whole different meaning. And then you're not trying to be right. You're not trying to prove people wrong. You're not interested in debating because it's worthless. It's an, actually a, a wasted energy act, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Man. I'm glad you got clear on that. And it's a message I think a lot of people would benefit from really being able to embrace. Uh, you know, it's part of the hypnosis is to believe that you're right. And, uh, you know, and so, uh, yeah, it's just, uh, I think more and more people will gravitate toward it and they'll start to understand that this is, there's, there's liberation in neutrality. There's, uh, if we could suspend judgment, on others, then we would actually be able to suspend judgment on ourselves, which liberates the shame and guilt that a lot of people don't even admit they're in because they're trying to keep up with others and make sure that they don't miss out or they're afraid to say what they feel until enough people say what they feel and then they'll say it. And we're just holding each other back if we keep that pattern going. And so I really appreciate that you're kind of, you're offering very confronting things, you know, and, and, and so do the Toltec. They're very, they're very just, it's really challenging for people to read the Castaneda material because it disassembles all the things that people have built, their entire structure of belief systems, everything that 
we do comes from a place of assuming things that actually are more like it's more like a hive mind foreign installation like like virus that keeps people operating from a place of being able to be controlled so it, being able to admit that we're being controlled is the first step and most people's egos aren't comfortable with acknowledging <laughs> that part yeah so yeah. huge props yep. to you man for for sharing your message and uh yeah i mean did you did you dump jump into decoding right out of uh or did you, when did decoding become part of your life yeah that's a good question um well i went to prison i got i got uh i was really heavily playing in the mainstream i was in real estate and um i ended up getting uh i caught a case as they say there were five of us that got indicted um, and that was the greatest, one of the greatest liberations of my life because, um, going to prison is what opened me up to the mystical arts. I started to read books, some things that I normally never did. I wasn't a big reader, but in the sentence I got, I got 24 months, served 18 months within those 18 months, I read over a hundred books. And a lot of the books I read more than once. I learned yeah. how to meditate for 30 minutes in the complete silence. That was something that was a, a cause. A, it took a lot of discipline to do that. But I was very, very interested in doing that, taking control of the mind and silencing the mind and really looking at how I live my life. So I made lemonade out of going to prison. So it wasn't until I went to prison and then I got out and then I went on a personal development journey. I, I started studying Bob Proctor and, um, you know, the great minds uh, of his time. And he really opened me up to learning about how to strategize your life, if you will. Okay. Uh, and then I got into numerology and astrology. I mean, I got into numerology when I was in prison, but it wasn't until I went through that personal development stage with Proctor and, and, uh, and, and others that really got me on the path of numerology and astrology. So in 2012, uh, right around the time I, 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 found Santos, you know, the great Santos Bonacci. I found him, I think around 2011, 2012. And that was kind of, I was like, oh, this guy's a JW. He went to prison too. Oh my God, this is a sign. And okay. it was from there, he was in astrology. It was from there that I, I got my my little breadcrumbs and the rest is history. I just jumped into it from there. Cool, man. Well, you've, to me, you've taken on a unique angle with it and uh, you get, you, you have a, it's pretty deep. You know, it's, 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 it's intense to follow you and, and it, it's, so there's a lot there and I look forward to learning more about it. I I've been just deep in Castaneda shamanic stuff and never really got into astrology or numerology, but I'm starting to recognize how helpful it is as a tracking device, one, an extra tool to be able yeah. to really navigate terrain and understand and be prepared maybe a little bit too, for shifts that are coming that you, you intuit, but you, when you validate, you know, I, I do use like Dow Oracle and I'll pick one card when I'm rarely needing a little extra. And it's usually just so spot on. And my body knows which card is like, I get really sensitive to which card needs to pull and which is a one way of doing it. Some people go quick. I'm, I like read the energy of almost at the top of the whole deck and re really patient. I enjoy that. So beautiful divination's a trip They're in the Castaneda. They use power plants for divination very and very intensely where you could go back in time and find out what actually happened, like solve murder mysteries and shit. But it's, it's using Datura and Datura is a ass kicker. Like people that get into Datura, it's pretty crazy. You can get into some pretty challenging environments. It's way more intense than most power plants that people are playing with. So mm. how about that? Have you, uh, did you open yourself up with anything over the years? Yeah, I was a huge cannabis fan for quite some time in my life. I was, I, I would just say it was medicinal for me. Yeah. Um, I don't, I rarely use it these days. I, I just really use nothing. I mean, really the most powerful uh, messages I've gotten was just completely stone sober, if you can believe that. Um, but I, I do, I do occasionally like mushrooms are cool. As a matter of fact, just right before we came on here, my next decode coming out for my, uh, members of Patreon will be the mushroom mushroom decoded. And it, it, it's, it's, believe it or not, that's tied into the orgasm and the, this is where you're going to get the nuclear test with the Trinity test and Oppenheimer and all this stuff. It's all, it's all fractals as we know, but they're all connected. And when you can see how they're all connected that way, it's pretty amazing how the magic mushroom is connected 
um, to the mind and, and thoughts. It's pretty, it's pretty amazing. So yeah, I've done that. And then I've tried, um, I've tried the, uh, the, the mother one time. Um, and I really didn't get anything out of, uh, the ayahuasca maybe cause I didn't purge, okay. but, um, I think I may try it again, but I haven't, uh, I haven't done so yet, but I, I, I tried it one time. Didn't get really get much from it. So. Hello. So you mentioned Oppenheimer and are you, have you looked into nukes being fake or what's your thoughts on what our reality with that dynamic is? Well, I mean, think about this. I mean, the Trinity test really happened. It's recorded. You can watch it on video. So, I mean, there was an explosion there. Well, whether what was exploded there, well, that remains to be seen, but um, you know, it's, it's in the fabric of time as they say. Uh, and then that's of course that, that Trinity test on July 16th, uh, the 16th card in the tarot is, is the tower card, the explosion. It happened on July 16th. So there's a synchronicity right there in your face that we can't deny. And then there's um, there's there's the element tied to the black sun, which might just be running this entire reality underneath. So the whole explosion of energy mm -hmm. is maybe what creates this entire reality. And this is why we get the interpretation through LSD, psilocybin, magic mushrooms, and all this stuff, because it's allowing you to see perhaps uh, what the other side looks like. Yeah. Yeah, the Toltecs made their discoveries through power plants, but then they realized that that would be very dangerous to continue to rely on. So they came up with some weird, very strange behaviors that put them into altered states for long periods of time that allow them to access or kind of remove their filters, but carefully um and and so yeah there's a, amazing i i look forward to hear or yeah I'll, I'll i'd be down to hear that mushroom story i'll um look into your patreon because that's a that's a really cool one i've done a lot of i've played with that medicine quite a bit when i was pretty young and we got a little aggressive with it where we would push it quite a few for many many days and then so it would be a strange formula lots of heavy cannabis we were working with a shaman and he was pushing, like, it was like always in the forest doing death to find fear-based kind of stuff, crossing canyons with fallen trees and climbing really high trees, jumping out, doing ninja roll shit. And, uh, but we'd push it with mushrooms and cannabis and then we'd just quit everything all at once. And so the extreme transition would make it feel like we we're on mushrooms for days and days and days afterwards. Interesting. And as long as we didn't take a hit of cannabis, it would keep going because the cannabis had become such an integral part of our reality wow. that by quitting so suddenly and then ha and, and and then letting the intensity of that week long mushroom experience, it's, it was a massive shift for all of us. And so there are little tricks out there for people. I'm not recommending. I, I teach a system of movements and recapitulating memory review and dreaming lucidity dreaming practices that get you just as high if not higher and in fact is way better because you know how you got there and you're integrating along the way rather than just getting slammed and shown these things and then having to integrate them later so um yeah man that's cool are you uh when when did you hook up with santos did you guys uh did you reach out to him right away when you uh, learn about uh, him not or... right not, not right away i was still kind of doing the personal development gig for a while and learning the discipline of that and um and then finally i uh, started communicating with him here and there commenting on some of his posts and then inevitably we we crossed paths uh where he came into la to do oh, a cool. show in burbank california and um i was fortunate enough to pick him up from the airport picked him up at the airport he got to stay with me and a couple right. friends of mine where I was staying in Los Angeles and I got to hang out with him. Yeah. And, uh, it was, it was, it was pretty grandiose because, um, you know, I, I, he, he's, he was such a big inspiration in my life, you know, in the beginning stages of my career sure. research. So I was very much, uh, enamored and I was really, uh, I was grateful, really, really grateful to be able to sit and hang out with him. We did a, we went up, in Beverly Hills, we're in this amazing park, uh, and called tree people. And we got to go hang out and there was about six or seven of us that all got to sit around the picnic table. And we did a, uh, the, the, the gathering of the syncretists is what we called it. And we got to just chat away for two hours. It was pretty awesome. 
So that was pretty glorious right there. Some of the memories of Santos. And, you know, he's still a great friend of mine. He's yeah. living here down in Mexico. He's down towards Guatemala, but, um, but he's a great friend of mine. And uh, I really, I just, I'm a fan of his, especially his older research. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Santos has been a big help for a lot of people, man. And I'm glad you got to meet him early on. And, you know, um, and I appreciate that decode you did on him where you explained that the the fact he had to murder somebody was scripted and, and you know, there's so much shame and guilt and confusion in this world. And, and, but I love that you're willing to say what a lot of people don't want to hear is that these things are, that it, 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 these are like contracts almost like we, yep. you know, and maybe we even uh, get to see our contract before we come in or something like, you know, that's what the Russian dreamers that I work with say that. How's that right? if you can get altered enough, if you can learn this lucid dreaming practice, you can actually get to what they call the 11th density layer and renegotiate your contract, or at least understand, even have a glimpse of how you go out and stuff. And they they say they don't want to know because that would ruin things. You know, they don't want to find out how they exit here. Got it. But yeah, it's, that's cool. Cause uh, you know, even though I think, there's probably stuff to still clear energetically and emotionally for Santos because of what he went through. Oh, I, I told it for sure. Right. It doesn't. So it's not like, it's like our, we're contracted, but there's still some, maybe some, you know, we can, we can navigate this within the the rigidity of our contract. We can still be as impeccable and as liberated as, as possible and emotional healing and, and, and trauma release is a big part of that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think, you know, I've kind of, I really have tried to change my vocabulary or my vocabulary is changing me where I don't say things are happening to me. Things are happening for me. And there's a big difference between four and two. Cause a lot of people say, Oh, this happened to me. Well, not, well, maybe you want to look at it, it happen for you. And there's always a lesson with that in mind with happening it for you. So a lot of people, they just, that, that would, that's the challenging part I think is surrendering to the fact that you're not in control of your life. And that's a big deal because then, yeah, as you said, it's, in, it's the, probably the biggest ego buster there is, but it's very liberating. It's very freeing. Uh, and then I've, you know, for me, I've gotten the signs almost every day since I've done that through, you know, I go to the grocery store, I buy some food, it's in the receipt. I yeah. plug my phone in, it's in the battery percentage. I mean, it's constantly reminding me, Hey dude, uh, I own you, you know, you're not in control of this reality. And it's, so it's very freeing. And then of course the search and the hunt for, well, what's my purpose? Yeah. You know, man's search, man's search for meaning. Yeah. Victor Frankl, that book, man's search for meaning. So this is, these are, this is why these authors wrote these books and why you're doing the great work that you're doing. And Carlos Castaneda, I mean, he's got the double C Carlos Castaneda is a CC. C is the third letter. That's the 33 right there. So there's that magical 33. And then you got to know what the 33 is. But remember, the C is a broken zero or a broken O. When the, the C is created from, it, it breaks the O and the O is the power button. So mm -hmm. the number three is going to be tied to that with the number eight. And then the number uh, zero or the O will be tied to the the, the letter C or the number three. It's a, it's a broken O, which is the power button. So it's very interesting when you start to look at our reality through symbols mm -hmm. and go deeper. Cause I think that, you know, the majority of people, they love the final product of this reality, but they're not interested in the code that writes the final products mm -hmm. uh, for me and you and many others. We're interested in, yeah. What is creating the, what has created the code that mm -hmm. delivers itself to this world? And we say, Oh, that's a phone or that's a glass or that's a mouse or that's a pen but there's code behind this. I can put it on a scale. I can weigh it. It gives us me, gives me a number. I can measure it with a ruler. It gives me a number. So it's all going mm -hmm. to be tied to letters, numbers, and symbols versus just the final product of saying, oh, this is a pen. Yeah, great. But I'm interested in what's, what's the makeup of that pen. Very cool. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is why the Toltecs, they, they seek to find uh, other layers of the onion and learn to hang out in these other places and to decode those places too. They say there's realms uh, just as functional as the one that you and I are in, that you can go and be with, that people, their energy is different. They're foreign. It's almost like alien energy, but they, they're bipedal armed, you know, pretty much they're clothed, they drive vehicles, they, you know, and, 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 but there's, there's coding there. It's not like, it's not like we can get away from the codes. It's just that we can learn to go into these other layers, potentially like the Mayan maybe did that, 
you learn to gr learn to dream in groups and be able to use this place not just for what it's offering within the story but come out of the story right and so this is where that they say though it's it's almost impossible to do because you would have to stop your dialogue yeah right which you learned about in jail if you could actually get this thing this voice to stop chatting something really phenomenal starts to occur you, you're this all goes away if that stops and but the effort that it takes it could almost drive you insane because it's such a constant thing so you could be kidding yourself even thinking and and maybe the Castaneda thing is just a, a lure to make people think that it's possible I'm not claiming you know that it is more than just books right it, it's for me it's just books but it answers questions that I think prove that the Toltecs in the past were on to something very significant and that they used to misuse their power and control people mm. Uh, just like the what I think the European sorcerers are doing through banking and and media is it's just a different type of sorcery. And if we could come to terms with sorcery and accept it and not as an evil thing, but as a thing, you know, that is possible that that hum humans could get together and do rituals and use their will in a way that would. And I'm not interested in this. I think that's that's the. You know, that's where it gets tricky is people do human sacrifices. They do things in order to get results energetically. And there is an exchange of energy. There's a transfer of power. They receive it. They rush it. They even drink things like the blood. And and it puts them in these really altered states. And this is what old sorcerers did. And so we're in a time where people think that doesn't go on. But sorcery is alive and well. And it's And in a way, we need to become conscious of it, I think. So that we come out of the hypnosis of domestication and recognize this is a kind of a wild place, like, and 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 to to not fall into these traps where power is being offered to you, you know, like you get into certain circles if you start making lots of wealth, and you're gonna have to make decisions as to what how, how you're gonna what you're willing to do. And so I appreciate that you're not getting spun out by materialism. I you know. I have a client who got in a major car accident and got his world rocked and he's suffering for years, mm. but it pulled him out of materialism. He was heading in a direction. So even though he's suffering, his gratitude that he didn't go in that direction and, and get caught in his ego, it's a really beautiful story. Even Blessing though in disguise, baby. Yep. All of it. As they say, blessing in disguise. Yeah, totally. I mean, it's, you know, I had done a decode on the fool, the fool card in the tarot, right? Card zero. And uh, that's what we all become. We, we become as a material body, we become a fool. Mm -hmm. And the desire of the flesh is what creates the materialism. Of course, that that is what's called fool's gold. Mm -hmm. Right. So fool's gold is pyrite. If you go on, if you want to, if you're into stones and there's there, when you do the molar mass of pyrite, again, going into the source code behind the final product called pyrite, there's what's called the molar mass. And it's all about chemistry and alchemy. This is where you get philosopher's stone, but the pyrite clearly told the story of it being fool's gold. And then what is the gold? Well, the gold is getting rid of the materialism and, and achieving a status of spirituality where, you know, you, the spirit doesn't need shit. It doesn't, the ego wants everything. The ego's like, get, get, let's, let's do this. Let's do that. And it's, it never gets satisfied. Yeah. The ego never will get, it wants the shiny new toy. It wants the shiny new toy. It wants the shiny new toy. And you know, that's the pursuit of happiness as Werner Erhard from the great landmark says, he says, the pursuit of happiness is the absolute guarantee against happiness because you, you have something like, oh, this is cool. And then it wears off. That's why yeah. people trade their cars in every three years. That's why leases were created in the car dealership uh, functionality because people got tired of the new car and it, it wasn't shiny anymore and they weren't vacuuming it, weren't waxing it. And this is the the, the desires of the flesh. So desire is what creates this reality 1,000%. Mm -hmm. I mean, in numerology, the word duality equals 20, just like the word orgasm equals 20. This is the magic mushroom because the nuclear bomb, when it goes off, creates the mushroom and the mushroom cloud creates fallout and that creates 
You can even get into the black sun with the white sun and the Tesla, the symbol of that. And it showers outside of the dome and it creates and showers down and creates this reality. Now you get into the simulation theory, the whole nine yards. And this is, this gets super interesting, but the orgasm clearly has a fractal. And that is like, we have an orgasm. It's a feeling. It can create offspring. It can create a seedling and all the animals and plants do that in this reality. That's what keeps this game going. It yeah. keeps, what keeps this game going is, is players as I have, as I have as the code is shown yes oh really cool man yeah so i mean celibacy sex uh you know the option there like or you know the combination finding that balance you know it's uh it's a thing now a lot of people are you know semen retention and they're really like and then but i also notice they get a lot of shame and guilt if they release and then they feel they beat themselves up and now it's yeah. all i fucked up and now i so it's just so funny to watch these things come in and how it affects everybody in, in waves. And then they get self-righteous about that. Or if you're not carnivore, if you're not fruitarian, if you're not this or that, but reality, it's just like, you know, for me, Toltec say, if you, if you, you don't want to put yourself above or below anyone because everyone's story is rich, you know, and, and, in, and the freedom of suspending judgment liberates you and you see the, the magic, the sadness, the beauty, all of it. Yes. It's really quite poetic. It's romantic almost to have a relationship with perception instead of being in judgment. So yep. yeah, it's, uh, but you know, have you, I mean, I imagine you've experienced the benefits of semen retention over the years and built your tea in that way. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I've been single since 2018. Um, you know, just will I, will that change? I'm, 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 I've surrendered to the code. So if that changes, it changes. I'm, I'm open to that. I'm not closed off to it, but I've lived a life of, over those past five years, I've lived a life of celibacy more than I have not. So, um, but, but, but do I do in practice consciously semen retention? No, I, I don't. Right. Um, you know, I have a, I, ha, I have a friend, I have a few friends that if they don't release, they get pain. Wow. And so it's like, okay, well, you're going to tell me those people are wrong. You're right. going to tell me that they need to struggle with pain because yeah. they can't release to, for, you know, to get rid of the, the... Yeah, so yeah. this is why I go back and I follow exactly what you follow. And that is there's no judgment in my life. Yeah. Um, and I strive to look at everybody's code and, and especially when I do readings, I'm like, I love doing readings for people because I can look at superstar. I can see a star right there. I can see, man, you're a star man of this show. What are you doing? And mm. a lot of people have star like qualities, but it's been suppressed. Mm. And well. when you own the space of being a star, like being the star of the show, you then get to re when you surrender to that, man, it's a game changer because now you get to do what the hell you, you you're supposed to be doing. As you know, I and I've said this, I and mean, this is my truth. Not every soul, if you want to look at it that way, incarnates to play the good character. Totally. It just doesn't work that way, man. You need to have the contrast. So there are people that incarnate to play the bad people, the bad characters. And if you're if you're one of those people, mm -hmm. see that the challenging thing is people are like, no, 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 no. No, no, no. There's, you can't, you can't do that. No, no, you can't. And because that is where the acceptance part of it is. So there are those that play the bad character and they own that. Yes. And, uh, you know, am I a fan of the bad character? Well, not necessarily, but I appreciate and respect the game and the way this movie works and operates. And I got this code that I got and I, and I revel in it and I own it and I'm grateful for it. Just like you are. Yeah, no, totally. And, and if you really were to study the story of the person, how they became the bad character, it's not their fault. They were given the circumstances. Bingo. Right. And so where are you going to trace it back? Okay. Now you're going to blame mom and dad for that person being bad. Okay. Well, what happened to them that made them parent their kid yep. in the way that they did? Right. It just, it's just generational trauma and it's part, it's part of our system. To me, this is the greatest story ever. I wouldn't change anything. It's like, if I wanted to read a book, this is the book I would read the, this book of life. It's amazing. Yep. Uh, but it's it's not easy for people to concept because they then say that you're giving excuse to people who are abusive or whatever. And yep. but the reality is those people need love. Everybody, every even even the sexual stuff, they just are so it got so confused that their system overrode because that was built into their their trauma patterning because of the affection they didn't receive, or because they were abused themselves and they yep. just energy was moving through their body and they didn't know what to do and all of a sudden for them some of them it's like blacking out and waking up 
Yeah. They literally go into altered states when they murder and all these things. It's fucking insane. And so we need to learn to be students and scientists of energy and really decode it, you know, and that's what Toltecs are referred to as scientists of energy. They're the learned ones. They're the ones that are willing to look at things energetically. And they claim that they can see like uh, beyond the physical. Mm. They, they, they've learned to, to observe the energetic side and that these things can be all validated by bringing other people into that same room, basically, to see mm. the same thing. So you can, so you could, they say when death is one of the most beautiful things to witness, you know, uh, conception, when you see what a child being conceived, which does happen, you know, according to them, life begins at conception from what they've observed and that it's a beautiful, incredible explosion of energy. Right. And, yep. and then again, uh, one thing they talk about around the celibacy thing or the chi thing is that depending on how powerful the sex was depends on how strong the chi of that child will be. So if mommy didn't have an orgasm and daddy just prematurely ejaculated and that child was conceived, that child's going to be lopsided a little bit. He's going to have he's not going to have that feminine uh, ec ecstatic energy that that gives him that en er, energy to start life with. That doesn't mean right. he, 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 that he can't gain it. He'll have to work extra hard. He or she will have to work extra hard, but they might struggle and get drained from sex. And so they might be uh, somebody that would really benefit from celibacy. Mm. So there's, there's interesting things that the Toltecs say about about that part as well. So um, fascinating stuff, man. I mean, it's all it can be all really broken yeah. down, right? Yeah, it's something we can learn to 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 see clear and and have a lot of appreciation for the different ways people are brought in and what they're you know what they can offer. But I agree that everybody has a unique gift. And but some people don't, they can spend their whole life and not uh, give themselves permission to explore it. You know, they can That's suffer it. not being not. And, and so decoding or card readings or things that could could free them up, they spend their whole life. And they're like, oh, I don't have 25 bucks for this reading. You know what? But it could that they could walk in a psychic's door and have their life changed. You know, it's yeah. just these are the these are the modern day shamans, the decoders, in my opinion, the people that can suspend judgment and get a clear view and really tune in and be a mirror and whatever tools you're using to be a mirror, you're essentially being told what to say to this person. Yeah. Right? And, and so that's a conduit. That means we have to get empty enough to be able to be efficient at that, which means minimalist being minimalist, clear, less, less attachments, less projections or less expectations on others or ourselves. So good job, man. You're for you're, sure offering a really cool service and glad people are finding you and yeah yeah well you know you were when you went on stage and uh, jason's event i was like this dude see this dude knows what's going on man he's got to figure it out so i was i was plastered to listening to what you had to say um not that they other people didn't you know not that jason or max egan and uh, they're all, but the beautiful part is i had no judgment with those people i'm just looking at those people i'm like He's doing his code. She's doing yeah. her code. And it's just so amazing when you can have no judgment because then you're not labeling. Right. You're just being able to look at people with beauty and enamorment and look at them and say, wow, what an amazing life you have, you know, if you really want to live that. And I think it really comes down to giving yourself permission, giving yourself permission to say, I'm going to do this. But yeah. of course, mom and dad raised you pretty much. And if it wasn't mom and dad, it was Grammy and Grampy or it was, you know, and though if you take a chart of your mother and father astrologically and you compare it to yours, it's probably 99.9% .9 of the time, not going to look anything like yours, but your mother and father, whoever raised you was, was speaking to you with mm -hmm. the magical spells on and based upon their code. And so it's all this trauma, as you said, so much of our reality is based on suppression because of trauma mm -hmm. of people and uh, nar narcissism. I, I, I like to say, I think everybody has narcissism in them just a little bit. If you, you may have a lot, you, but I think everybody has a little bit, 
right? Sure. And I think that uh, we attract people to cure that or fix it or remove it from the, the data banks of our programming, the trauma. And so the trauma is a big thing. And I think that is one of the things that allows us to grow. And this is how people say, well, this is a school, like life is a school. Wow. I don't know how that would work when you're living in a predestined scripted reality, because it's clear that's what we're living through. But if that, if that makes you feel good, great that you were living in a school, then, then how about? Yeah, totally. I think there's stages to the way people look at it. And that's one stage to hopefully get to the, you know, I look at it more of an initiation and, but we're, we're remembering, I think we, this has actually already happened and we wouldn't possibly be able to experience it as it's happening. Cause it's, it's a lot, right. So we, we get to slow it down and experience it in a linear way, but there's what shamans try to do is go to the non-linear where they can almost like see it all and yep. and so their future and self self informs them of things because they're tapping into and then deja vu allows people to have glimpses of what they're going to experience years from now and that's happened to me personally where i'll have just a ran a dream and i'm dreaming of a neighborhood and it's a it, the dream means nothing to me there's a car there's you know somebody walking in a door and then there's an event that happens, like somebody crashes in a bike into a mailbox. Mm. And and then, you know, I'm just like, wow, why did I have that dream or whatever? And then years later, I'm I'm in a friend's house in a town I have never been in. And all of a sudden, the very scene that I dreamt is right there. And it the chills and the goosebumps and the intensity mm. of that, it just helps me to realize that there's so much more going on than we could possibly ever understand. Life is a mystery. Um, I don't think it's meant to be like, I'm seeking questions rather than answers. You know, I'm wanting to be inside of the curiosity of it. And I think if we can show up as beginners, you know, as if we've never learned anything and be open to learning to everything that we hear, but yeah, you start to, you start to notice the difference. Like at, at archaics, the messaging, you know, like Max Egan was like, we need to, we need to do something. We need to stop what's happening, right? This this and he's got everybody riled up at the end and it was such a you know it's so different than what you and I are talking about we're like it, it's okay you know it, this is all this is what it is and and so a lot of people spend their life you know being at odds and being offended and wanting to change it and i i don't think and this is what toltex has discovered is that that's not even possible for one and so the inner journey is where the freedom lies, not in trying to change the outer. External. It's, it's that inside work. So, yep. Yep. But of course, the ego wants to change the external. It wants to feel like it's in control. This is why people love the dirty laundry. They get their fix this way. Dirty laundry meaning mainstream, meaning that you want to go shout from the rooftops and yep. try to go, you know, I'm going to go vote or I'm going to go do this thinking because the, the, that, the, that, that's the collective, which you're never going to change. In a million years, you'll never change that. It's like going to yell at the sun or the moon and telling it to move. It's not yeah. going to do that for you. It's going to do it because it's on a timer. It's going to do it on its own time. But I really like to look at life like uh, like a lightning bolt. And mm -hmm. when you look at a lightning bolt, you have in the very the center of the lightning bolt, it's the biggest bolt, right? And that is kind of the path. Uh, the journey of life, but then you have all the fractals of the lightning bolt coming out on either sides. And I think those are part of the journey as well. And sometimes we branch off from the main vein of the lightning bolt and we go to the smaller sectors of the lightning bolt, still going towards the ground, still going towards the finish line, but kind of getting off course a little bit. And these challenges to get us back on that main lightning bolt vein. And this mm -hmm. is where we talk about light into matter. And I really think the lightning bolt, just the lightning, the simplicity of it tells so much about the journey of life. It's so beautiful, really, if you look at it. Wow, cool. I like that. Yeah. Big fan of lightning. It's one of my favorite things to witness. Um, For sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a beautiful storms. I really love storm energy. I love, uh, yeah, weather, intensity. You know, I snowboard in intense places in the mountains at night and uh, or I go up in the mountains by myself and I have these, these flat boots that I can run down these like canyons and just skate on my feet. Oh, wow. Uh, like twilight and stuff, a little bit of mushrooms. It's, there's a lot of things we can do to really kind of get the chakras uh, cleaned out is, is what I call it, where you, you just get a lot of energy running through, you know, any sort of, it's not super adrenaline daredevil shit where I have to face my death, but stuff that, you know, keeps me really engaged in, in the mountains and stuff. And 
saturating ourselves in nature and 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 learning to be silent in in the mountains it's the mother speak she she she'll give you like boosts of energy and feelings mm -hmm. come to you and you'll get these clarity and you you know how to, how what how to resolve things and yeah it's a uh, I got told years ago, like really strongly that everything's, you know, things were really stressful with my marriage and my kids and money. And I was just fucking so injured from carpentry all the time and martial arts. And I just, you know, I couldn't, I just didn't feel good, but I got something came in and just told me that everything's going to be okay. And it was just a message that was so strong that it allowed me to start to relax and to trust and to open up to what that would look like. And that's all that it took was to to allow that opening. So I I I can have compassion for people's pain, confusion, suffering, sure. because they thought they had to carry weight that wasn't theirs. Yeah. The program told them that you have to do more than you're doing. Yeah. And so then the stress adds on and then the the you start projecting onto your own self. And and so yeah, I try to help people and it's not easy, but I help to try to pull a different you know, like, I'd love to help Santos, man. Like, there's some really simple things with his anger toward the world, right? And he's so powerful. He's so gifted. He's so capable, right? And and I've offered and other people have recommended he work with somebody in these ways. Um, emotional healing is necessary for all of us um, because we need people like him to be decoding the world without getting, you know, upset. But I understand that maybe it's in his code to to be upset and to put out those videos calling everybody pedophiles and all that crazy energy. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's, that, that's, that's why when you come from a place, your foundation of non-judgment, you'll look at Santos. And even though, yeah, I may not agree with his behavior. Some of the times I don't look, I don't judge him based on that. I judge him based on what I value in him, not what I don't value. And so this is where you get the non-judgmental aspect. And, you know, I, for my whole life, I've done this where I strive to look at the good in people. And it's okay. gotten me burned. Yes. Uh, you could say I'm naive a little bit, you know, yeah. because I've kind of gotten chapped here, chapped there, but I wouldn't have it any other way because really, you know, you had said it best. You said when you're one with the mother, when you're one with nature and you're, 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 you're snowboarding down the mountain, or as I like to look at it, like if you're somebody who's on a surfboard, so what do surfers do? They paddle out, they, they find the biggest and most beautiful wave and they get on the wave and you never see a surfer jump purposely halfway off through the ride. They ride the wave as long as they can and they enjoy the ride. And in that moment, you're not thinking about car payments. You're not thinking about feeding dog. You're not thinking, you're just thinking about like, the exhilaration of riding that wave. And that could be riding that mountain on the skis or snowboard. That can be, you know, pulling, being pulled by a snow, uh, uh, by, by water skiing. It can be so many things. But I think that life, is the most neutral and the most beautiful when you release. And that's what we want to do. We want to, we want to be like we're on the mountain snowboarding or skiing. You want to be like you're on a surfboard, just let go and yeah. try to focus and try to get in the habit of doing that. And I think that is the most exhilarating part of life. If you can get into that programming. Beautiful. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I mean, it's, I've, I, when the first time I took LSD, I was 13 years old. And at the moment it hit, I knew that this was a more efficient way of being. I felt an instant, like this, I realized that I could, if I could live like this in this perception that was new to me, that life would be completely interesting. I would be passionate. I would feel purpose and direction. And I felt that humanity actually was meant to live in this little adjusted place. I didn't think of it as a drug. I just thought of it as a drug that accessed a part of me, you know, that is natural. And so I always believed that I could get there on my own. And that's been my life's mission is to train with shamans in order to do that. And I've, I've achieved that. I can put myself in that state. And so I get to live that snowboarding perception most of my my life now. And it's it takes getting used to. Um, you know, you, you the people in your life have to accept that you're not going to do things the way most, you're not going to live on autopilot. You're going to be way more, you know, uh, sensitive to everything and more in tune and listening and not just go out the door when you're told to, or when you're supposed to, but you, you just become impeccable with when to go and when not to do things. And you, you learn how to hang out in that, that more, uh, intuitive space of, and, and you don't give your time away and you really care for yourself. Like it's, it's a self-care routine that comes naturally from these discoveries. So yeah. 
Yeah, man, the flow state and the about the ability. So the cool thing about snowboarding or surfing or whatever is when you can figure out how to do it in, in a dream, when you're lucid dreaming, like you're partially awake and partially asleep and you're you're doing stuff like that. For me, often it's like I'm flying down a highway at twilight above all these cars in the middle of some like mountain town and there everyone's coming down the but I I I have very lucid dream like uh access that if people if people knew how incredible it was they would do a lot of i think be willing to make some adjustments to have access to it um so the doors are for, the doors of perception are very vast but the problem is most people honestly who get into the perceptual altered or they become focused on that can end up coming up becoming very ungrounded or in, even end up in a mental ward so it's not something to force or and yeah. often people that are into spirituality are running from something, trying to prove something, and they're avoiding like what the world was trying to show them. Mm -hmm. Like the simplest things are always right in front of our face. So you yeah. see a lot of people go all over the world just to come back and realize that everything they ever needed was right there in their little hometown to show them what they, you know, it's weird, but we that's what Carlos Castaneda says. You don't need a guru, you don't need a teacher. The world, it's like biofeedback. It yep. will reflect to you who you are. And if all these shit's going wrong all the time in your life, you got to take responsibility somehow and recognize that there's it's a reflection of what's the inner alchemy that's occurring within you. And so, um, yeah, you know, people like you that are unable to free themselves from these stories, you become more detached. You become indifferent, which people think is cold, but it's it's just it's it's just uh you know the most efficient way of of seeing and and learning, and ultimately you're going to be of the most support if you're willing to tell people the hard truth and have the tough love conversations rather than support their illusions of grandeur that most people have. If you really dig in, people are mm -hmm. either victims, they're either victims of life or they're victorious over it, and Good and. Point. They they, can, they have a hard time ever finding that place where they can be, you know, in that neutral zone. So, yep. No, that's a good point. I like to look at like, we take court system, the court system and yeah. the judge. Yeah. And the judge is the judge is not on the court. The judge is actually above the court in the stands observing the court and the players would be the plaintiff and defendant and the attorneys, you know, the prosecuting and defense attorneys. And so the judge's job is to rule based upon the, the discoveries that come forth and the expressions of the attorneys. But the jury, the judge is not supposed to make a decision based on emotions because emotions can be persuaded. But when you're non-emotional, which we're taught not to be that way, because then you're, you're, you're well, this, that, you're just human. You're just right. being a human being, which I get, right? But but the emotions can get us into very deep waters and it can sway us to a certain direction. So when a judge becomes very, very good, um, which yeah. of course the judge is dressed in black, it, it's a representation of Saturn. Saturn is known as very malefic and cold. Well, the job of Saturn in Kronos is, is to cross the T's and dot the I's. And when it delivers its judgment, the judgment should be based upon non-emotions. It should be based on logic with discernment. And that is it. So when you look at life like that, you can get emotional based on the surrendering of this reality and riding the wave. But when you're looking at somebody else, and when you're looking at your life, and you can and you could look at it without emotionally getting involved with it. I, I I call that a win if there is such a thing. Love it. Wow. Dude, that's amazing. I haven't heard of that concept, but that makes total yeah. sense. And makes sense, right? Yeah. 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 And could, you know, like everyone's like, everyone's like, oh, we need anarchy and stuff. And I, I just look at the system as it is what it is. Like we don't need to change it. But this yeah. all this energy and this idea that we could create a utopia, I think, is going to just it's just going to waste people's energy and spin them out when they could have spent their life freeing themselves from all of it. And, um, but I get where they're coming from. You know, the, the volunteerism makes sense that, you know, it, we think, Oh, we have to have government because otherwise who would fix the roads and who would judge the, the people. But the reality is it's, it's, it's all because it's scripted, it's going to happen. However it happens. And maybe we do achieve anarchy. Maybe that would be, you know, an interesting chaotic period. But it's not something to be in if we're invested in outcome instead of 
if we're if we're invested in outcome, we're 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 basically going to be disappointed one way or another. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Very well said, man. That's that's a humdinger right there. Yeah. So I mean, don't get invested in outcomes, people. <laughs> Try yeah. not to be invested in your outcomes. Yeah. Yeah. And and not to expect people to be any different than they are. You know, like a, a lot of a lot of relationships struggle because people are looking outside of themselves and they're just like wanting to cast the blame, you know. So but each it could be a sexual relationship, it could be a business relationship. People are hard, man. It's hard to work with people. And if you're triggered by a person, right? If they trigger you, yeah. there's something within you that's unresolved. Otherwise, you wouldn't be triggered. You'd just be observing. Right. So we actually benefit from having meeting people and and having conversations and having by putting ourselves online we're going to get people that how dare you claim to know this or that and that gives us an opportunity to see if we're triggered by an attack that comes in from a troll or whatever um and we just keep refining and adjusting and learning and and you know uh, i i also benefit the idea that like bob dylan said you know he he got so sick of the fame that he just he didn't want it anymore. And so he just was an asshole on purpose. So people would leave him alone. And now Bob Dylan's known as an asshole, but maybe he's mm -hmm. not an asshole. Maybe he just really just wanted to be left alone. And that, that was his play. Yeah. yeah. Like there's so much power in that, like being the villain, right? Yep. Jason and I, Jason Bashirs and I did our first talk, Toltec to high tech, who are, who really are the elite. And, and Jason posed the question, like, are these villains actually villains? You know, like, who are these people? Like, maybe they, like, how beneficial is the villain in the movie to be the catalyst for the entire thing to play out? You know, so everything that we're looking at, we may think we've learned this stuff about all these people and the the the, the names and all that Santos talks about, all this stuff, you know? And, but in reality, these are, these are characters in a dream, right? They're serving their purpose whether or not they get high off being villains or maybe maybe real villains believe in their cause right like that 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 they they not only believe it's their contract but they actually for them it it is a, a like a a way of perceiving reality that is ruthless and powerful and is more engaged and and so i i just don't think unless we were to really be in their shoes we have any clue what the mechanisms are that put people in there in these in these dynamics uh, i think P those are good points i i i really think that uh, and we're all guilty of this people they will cast their opinions without having the full gamut of what's going on yeah uh, they, they don't have all the moving parts and they will just assume that it's this or that um and then they cast their opinions on how they feel it should be or what this person is all about. And without having all the facts, if you will, the one plus one equals two facts. And we're all guilty of this. I think we all do that because that is where we get to be right. You yeah. know, and uh, I, I think, you know, me being a fan of Werner Erhard and the landmark uh, uh, seminars, it, what Werner Erhard says that, you know, life's about looking good and people that the foundation of life is about, hey, look at me. Look at where I'm at. Look at this. Look at that. And then you want you want energy for that. You want a, a payoff for that. And the payoff is you get comments, you get likes, you get subscribers, you get this, you get that. Uh, oh, you you're looking for. I mean, it's so the classical representation of a human being who wants to get in a relationship. They get single. What do they normally do? They start putting videos of themselves or pictures of themselves on their social media, dressed up. I'm going out. Look at me, look at me, look at me. And what they're doing is they're fishing for, for something. They're fishing for likes, subscriptions, comments. They want to feel good. Maybe mm. they don't feel so good. Maybe they don't feel so hot and they need people to give them attention. And it's yeah. about looking good. You know, and I, I say, do you want the world to change? Well, to me, the funny part about changing the world is when you walk into a typical nightclub and all the women in the nightclub 
All of them have no makeup on and their hair's up and they're wearing sweatpants. That is when you'll see a great change in the world, but you're never going to see it because when you go walk into a nightclub, all the mm. girls are decked out. They got tons of makeup on their hair is done. Yeah, yeah, and the guys are the same way. The guys mm. would be the same way. So the contrast, the guys would be wearing sweatpants as well. Yeah. They would have bed head. Their hair would be all over the place. No one goes out into a nightclub looking like that because that nightclub is designed to get some. It's designed to get uh, the nookie. It's designed to procreate. It's designed to pump out another player or it's designed for you to get comfortability so you don't feel like you're alone and that's how this game needs players and how it ends up procreating through us i think and that's yeah. the comedy in life i feel yeah, yeah. Is that this is what we're looking at for how, how how funny this reality is wow very cool man yeah you're so that's such a good thing to say the toltecs say that women if they were to cut men off from sex that they could determine our future one thousand percent they have all the power yeah. I can't make a baby. Yeah. <laughs> you ladies have all the power. Totally. Yeah. But they, you know, they, the, the, the culture is such that their, their, their moms or whatever energy gets yep. passed down and what they witness and feel and trauma, it's man. Very difficult. So we used to, it, we, I started reading Costane at 16. So I would go with girls that would no, go no makeup. We would go to these raves and we would just be raw and real and not, be seeking sex we were celibate at a young age we were going for the music not so we didn't even talk to people we were just really kind of you know there for for spirit not for for a profit so to speak you know we weren't trying to get anything and there's just so much freedom to have started my life that way i spent at 17 years old i spent an entire year without sexual thoughts because i was so into castaneda and it's so based on celibacy that and it's so fascinating that I just was in the forest reading these books, playing with the concepts. Uh, there's physical things you can learn to do from the books that are life changing. So that was a massive boost for me to come out of the social power and have experienced something very authentic. And most people aren't willing to give up social power in order to discover what real power is. And and that's the identity, the need that, you know, they, they want to know how many people are, they're afraid there's not going to be anyone at their funeral if they don't have friends. They they travel across the world just to take pictures so they can show people that they went somewhere. They're, they're not actually experiencing life. And it's quite painful to observe on a level, but I'm also so thankful they're there to show me this, to look in their eyes, to see, you know, these beings that are operating from this social power structure and how limiting it is it's as sad and 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 kind of uh confronting in a way it is it's actually really liberating because i feel really gratitude that i'm no longer being as contained uh and controlled as as the majority of the domesticated folks so dreaming or, or, or activating decoding is a form of coming out of domestication in my opinion it's it's a rewilding and your energy gets strong and you're able to then have experiences with perception that most people wouldn't even know were possible. You know, that's why shamans would go on vision quests for four days yeah. and four nights is they wanted to have a vision. They wanted the mother to speak to them. Yep. Some people, the mother speaks to them all the time and they don't have to go do some ritual for that to happen. Yep. And, but then at the same time, those people can easily turn into cult leaders because they get this idea that because they had a vision now they've met God and they're enlightened, right? And this whole idea of enlightenment it, and the ascension even, I think, is a is a lie. I think we're meant to like descend into the earth and can root down and be like anchored and not out in the fucking ether tripping out, like thinking we're gods or something. Like maybe we are, but I, I want to be here. I'm not looking for an exit strategy. I do want to learn how to go into the layer, other layers and not get spun out so that I can maybe help people who are, I would love to be able to, I, I, I observe schizophrenic people all the time because they're fascinating to me. Mm. I think if they had the right help instead of pills and, and just being locked up and shit, there's actual ways to slowly assist people in transitioning from dysfunction to semi-functional and then functional. And, and I think that would be amazing to witness and be a part of. And I think there's more and more people that are, willing to say the, the truth and not sugarcoat things. And, and the more of us that, you know, it's kind of the hundredth monkey thing. I think the future is exciting because there is a, a catalyst of 
of opportunity that that's sort of moving the pendulum a little bit. Yeah. Well, I mean, consider um, the astrological perspective of all of this. And um, if we, if we are, or if we've already entered into the Aquarian age, consider mm -hmm. the fact that, you know, Aquarius to me, really the true ruler is Uranus, not, not Kronos because Uranus really is the representation of no limits. Aquarians are very no limits, very, uh, very airy, very aloof, um, uh, very wide open spaces. That that's that's the Uranian energy. And if you go backwards into Piscean energy, which Joel, you and I were born in the Piscean age, so it seems Piscean age was ruled by um, by Mercury, the messenger, which is the way you think. And of course, this is all about the church and the programming of the church and telling you to do this and telling you to not to do that. And you got to get married and get a contract and have children. And you're not thinking for yourself, but Pisces is all about the mystic and having a mystical experience, what it means to be a human being. And then you predate that and you go into the age of Aries and that's Mars energy. And that's testosterone to its highest extreme and there was a lot of that going on back then and then prior to that when you had the age of taurus and that was venus so that wasn't any different because now you're getting into the 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 whole sexual energy the taurine energy and then you go prior to that and you get gemini and you're moving back into the doppelganger the twins and the way you think with the with the with the energy of mercury and then prior to that you had cancer which is the moon and the way you feel and then Leo is the, the sun and the spirit inside of you. Do we get any relief from this? That's the question. Because going from the age of Aquarius, which is I know thyself, uh, mm -hmm. and that's the benefit of knowing who you are, so you can play out and surrender to your code, maybe going into the age of Capricorn in the true essence of Kronos, uh, it's an earth sign. Maybe we move back into what it means to be a human being. And then right. after Capricorn, we go into Sag, which is Jupiter. And that, you know, Jupiter to me is really the, the essence of, philosophy and religion and where the, the where that stems from and then scorpio being tied to the pluto in the underworld so there's a lot of things to kind of look forward to astrologically if we're moving through these 2160 years and the ages of them but clearly theologically it says in the book of daniel where it talks about the kingdoms being destroyed i mean it clearly says that the two kingdoms that are iron and clay are not going to work together and that's the Old Testament and New Testament. That's Christianity and Judaism. These are not going to mix together. Right. They will be ruined. And all the kingdoms prior to that will be ruined because the new kingdom coming in, which mm -hmm. Jesus in theology clearly says that uh, is the new heavens and new earth, is going to be the age of Aquarius. Whether we've entered into that or not is besides the point. But I'm surrendered and I'm all ears and I'm just willing to let go and just ride that wave like the surfer does. So Amazing breakdown, dude. You, you've got this stuff... Uh been studying it for a long time i can tell yeah it's been studying me as i like to say i'm just an instrument being used so yeah yeah Fun. no it's a cool system man thank you for sharing that um yeah, you're welcome yeah no i love that you know whether jesus or it was a man or not and or whether nukes are fake or not they're still in the storyline they're still That's in right. the relation so we can we 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 benefit from knowing the story as it is um, and there's, there's cool, there's cool explore explorations to figure out what maybe was or isn't true, but ultimately the decodes, you know, that you and Jason Brashears do are based on what the mass is, what the news says, what the dates are, what, you know, even the calendar, even though it's been changed, it's still, we're, we're working with what is within the conception of per or perception of reality based on the masses. Yep. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of people that want to argue that and say, no, we we can fix this. We can we can just pull it back by convincing everybody to use the Aztec calendar. Today is this, not that, you know, and yep. but it, it's you know, I, I, I agree that and this is what Toltec says is be of your time. A lot of people Beautiful. are trying trying to be in the past, like the Amish and stuff, and you can yeah. feel the energy around it. It's like. They're not even with us. They're like in a in the past in a weird way. I mean, I haven't got to hang out with them, but there's something funky about it. And and I think that there's a lot of freedom and yeah, just being being thankful for this time. I think Cloud Atlas is a great movie where it shows throughout all the ages the same things are playing out over and over. The same sort of story is is being it's like the one story they call it and. Yep. So it's a, it's a, it's an amazing theater. Appreciate your time, Logan. So good to have you, man. Uh, we'd love to talk again and look forward to maybe doing some events together in the future. Um, That'd be great, man. We're, yeah, we'd yeah. love, I, I mean, I love what you're doing. I, 
really appreciated you and your voice at uh, the Archaics event in San Diego. Uh, again, you, you stood out more than anybody else, not to say any, you know, I was so grateful to be there and Jason and I love his work and I, you know, yeah. some of the other people there I got to meet. So I'm a fan of life, man. So that's, yeah, that's cool. it. I'm a fan of life. Yeah, dude. I love it. Me too. It's getting, getting strong too. So uh look forward to seeing you in the future, brother. Appreciate you taking the time and we'll uh, stay in touch. Much love, man. Very much love. Peace. Be well. See you guys. All right.